If I could have my first slide, please. Thank you. So first, I'd like to thank the Society for the privilege of being here. Um, it's always a great pleasure and honour to take part in this meeting because the quality of the meeting is excellent. I do have some conflicts of interest, but none of them are relevant to this particular talk. If you look at the 2014 ESC EX guidelines, we classify coronary disease into LED, proximal LED, into two or three vessel disease, into left main. And the key thing to take away from this slide is that as we practice today, if you look at patients with left main disease with a syntax score above 32, that's almost two thirds of all patients with left main. Notice it's got a class one indication for cabbage and a class three indication for PCI, class three being you shouldn't do it because it's potentially harmful. If you look at three vessel disease, in patients with syntax scores of either 23 to 32 or above 32, this is almost 80% of patients in contemporary practice. And note again, class one indication for cabbage, class three indication for PCI. Now, many trials have been conducted comparing PCI and cabbage, but many of these have also been used to distort the cardiology literature. I made this very clear in a lecture I gave to the STS in 2006, where at that time I summarized the 15 trials of PCI versus cabbage. I pointed out that although there were almost 9,000 patients in these trials, they had only included 5% of the potentially eligible population. And when you looked at the patients, only 35% actually had three vessel disease, only 40% had proximal LAD disease. And that was very different from patients undergoing cabbage in practice at that time, where over 90% had three-vessel disease and over 90% had proximal LAD disease. So the trial patients were very different from those that we were encountering in routine practice. Nevertheless, the results of these trials were then generalized to the whole population with ischemic heart disease. So we have to be very careful when we're interpreting data. A second consideration is to look when we look at effectiveness of a procedure is what is the duration of follow-up. Here are the results of three registries with over almost 250,000 patients plus a freedom trial. And you can see that as you follow up these interventions, PCI versus cabbage, there is a continuing divergence in outcome past five years. So comparing PCI to cabbage with one or two year outcomes is totally inappropriate. If you look at the most definitive analysis to date of PCI versus cabbage from the randomized trials that includes both syntax and freedom, this looked at 6,054 patients when the hazard ratio of death with cabbage was 0.73, so highly clinically and statistically significant. And that was also accompanied with cabbage with a marked reduction in the relative risk of myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, and stroke was very slightly increased, but just failed to reach statistical significance. Now, if you look at the single biggest trial itself, this was the syntax, um, which looked at just over 1,000 patients randomized to PCI or cabbage. And at five years, we can see an absolute reduction in mortality in favor of cabbage by five percentage points, marked reduction in cardiac death, myocardial infarction, and the need for repeat revascularization, and no significant increase in the risk of stroke. However, what syntax also sh showed us was a marked variation in outcome according to the severity of coronary artery disease, as defined by syntax scores below 23, 23 to 32, and above 32. And you can see that it's only in the lowest risk cohort, those with scores below 23, that there is no difference in mortality in favor of cabbage. However, even in the low risk group, there is a reduction in myocardial infarction and repeat revascularization. When we get into the intermediate group, there's a 7% difference in survival at five years, and the high risk group, a 9% survival advantage for cabbage. And both of these groups marked reductions in myocardial infarction and repeat revascularization. And another thing that's not fully appreciated is if you look at the survival curves at syntax at five years, they are continuing to diverge, suggesting that the true benefit of cabbage is underestimated even at five years. Now, if you look at patients with diabetes, there's not time to go through the individual trials. This is a meta-analysis of the largest trials, particularly freedom. And this again shows a consistently marked reduction in death, cardiac death, and the need for repeat revascularization in favor of cabbage. 
And the authors point out that the benefits of surgery continue to increase with increasing duration of follow-up. So if we ask why does cabbage have such a benefit over PCI, this is important because this illustrates clearly the different pathophysiological effects of both procedures. Anatomically, atheroma is mainly located in the proximal coronary arteries. So by placing bypass grafts to the mid-coronary vessel, you achieve two effects. It means the complexity of the proximal lesion becomes irrelevant. And by placing the graft to the mid-vessel, it offers prophylaxis against the development of new disease. In contrast, PCI only treats suitable localized proximal lesions but has no prophylactic benefit against new disease. The second thing is that the placement of internal mammary arteries to the coronary circulation was shown by Tom Lusher almost 30 years ago to have a protective effect on the native coronary circulation, mainly by the, re the release of nitric oxide and other endothelium-derived relaxing factors. In contrast, drug eluting stents in the proximal LAD impair re-endothelialization, create a prothrombotic environment, and impair endothelial function downstream of the stent. And the third reason is PCI usually means incomplete revascularization. This was shown by Hannon in a series of almost 22,000 patients undergoing PCI that almost 70% had incomplete revascularization and the subsequent mortality of these patients correlated directly with that degree of incompleteness of revascularization. So what we can say is that in current practice, PCI for most patients with multivessel and left main disease will not achieve the results of bypass grafting. It didn't with balloon angioplasty, it didn't with bare metal stents, it didn't with drug eluting stents, and it almost certainly will not with absorbable stents. Now, two papers that will bring great delight to the cardiologists were published in the New England Journal on March the 15th. The first is the BEST trial by S.J. Park, who's made enormous contributions in this area in Seoul and Korea. They randomized 800 patients to either cabbage or everolimus eluting, eluting stents. Now, the trial was stopped at early after almost four years of recruitment. They were meant to have recruited almost double this number of patients, but uh, they stopped with 880 patients. And what they found was, if you looked at the composite endpoint of death, MI, stroke, or repeated revascularization, there was a marked advantage in favour of cabbage, but this was largely driven by the need for repeat revascularization in PCI. But interestingly, death was lower in the cabbage group as was the incidence of new myocardial infarction and repeat revascularization. And if you look at the fact the mean syntax score in these patients was 24, they're almost identical to the results of the low cohort, less than 23 in the syntax trial. It is, however, also interesting to note that the authorship of this was 26 interventional cardiologists, and they actually point out that the medication received in the cabbage group was substantially inferior to patients receiving stents. The second paper published in the same issue of the New England Journal of Medicine was Bangalore. This time they looked at 18,000 propensity match patients, but this was from a population of 116,000. So 84% of their population were excluded. And despite this being published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the authors produced no syntax scores for these patients. So we don't know who they were, but almost certainly they would have been the low-risk cohort. And I find it astonishing that this was accepted by the New England Journal, and the accompanying editorial by a cardiologist didn't address the fact that there were no syntax scores in these patients. What about left main? We don't have time to go through all, so I'll just summarize what are the key points. This is the most definitive analysis of left main, 24 studies, three randomized trials, 14,000 patients followed to five years, and it shows convincingly no difference in the incidence of death or myocardial infarction between cabbage and PCI at five years, but for cabbage, a higher risk of stroke, 4.5% four, versus 1.5%, but lower risk of repeat revascularization with cabbage. And when they looked at the outcome of PCI in cabbage according to syntax tercels, for death, MI, MACE, and TBR, the only population with, who did better with cabbage were those with the syntax scores above 32. In the intermediate and lower group, there was either equipoise or PCI was better. And I think, why do we see this difference between three-vessel disease and left main? 
where cabbage does much better for three vessel. I think it's because in left main, unless you have additional proximal coronary artery disease, there is probably too much com competitive flow for bypass grafts. However, we will get a definitive answer to this question with the two ongoing trials, which are XL, which is finished recruitment, that's a trial of left main, versus, of left main PTI versus cabbage, but crucially in patients with syntax scores below 32, and the Noble trial, which did not have that exclusion criteria. In the last few slides, I just want to say something about the varying rates of PCI versus cabbage between countries and within countries. This is a, this is a paper produced by the OECD looking at the ratios of cabbage to PCI per 100,000 of population. The red bars are the number of cabbages per 100,000, the blue, the, the number of PCI per 100,000. You can see this amazing thing. This was in 2010. The ratio in the United Kingdom was two. Same about Mexico and New Zealand. As we go down through the, to the bottom of this graph, we can see that the ratios of PCI to cabbage increased to around eight to nine in southern European countries, particularly France and Spain. I was recently in Japan. Their PCI to cabbage ratio is 14 to one. And it was in Thailand last week. Their ratio of PCI to cabbage is 10 to 1. But the question becomes, why do we see these enormous variations in the ratios of PCI to cabbage? But it's not just between countries. This looks at the state of Ontario and Canada. One province, 17 cardiac centers. And if you look at the rate of in elective patients of PCI to cabbage, it varied in hospital A from 1.2 to 1 up to hospital Q, but it was six to one. So even within the same province in Canada, there was a five-fold difference in the rate of PCI to cabbage, depending on what hospital you were admitted to. But we in the UK have a national health service, and we're not really that much better. This is a paper we published last year in the European Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery. We looked at 151 primary care trusts in the United Kingdom, and looked at the ratio of PCI to cabbage. And we found that, in fact, there was a 13-fold difference from the lowest, which was 0 0.36, to the highest, which was 4.74. And the amazing thing is, those, the lowest and the highest performing P PCTs with it, for this ratio were only 40 miles apart in geographic distance. So we concluded, despite clear evidence-based guidelines for intervention, marked geographical variation in elective coronary revascularization practices also exists in England. This variation is unexplained by procedure volume or deprivation, suggesting the contribution of unwarranted influences, which may include practitioner preference. To reduce this level of unwarranted variation, we suggest that all interventions should be underpinned by internationally recognized guidelines or approved by a multidisciplinary team the heart team. And if you look, this is my penultimate slide, if you look at what happens in terms of patients undergoing PCI, actually understanding why they had the procedure, this is a paper published in the BMJ in October 2014. It looked at 991 elective patients in 10 prestigious US hospitals. And when the patients were asked afterwards why they had undergone the procedure, Almost 90% said it was, remember these were elective procedures, almost 90% said it was to save their life, almost 90% said it would prevent myocardial infarction, and almost 80% said it would extend their life expectancy. So three things that we know not to be true about PCI. It's interestingly that 40% of patients actually thought they had undergone an emergency procedure, although these were all elective procedures. And in fact, only 1% of the cohort recognized why they, were, they had undergone PCI, and that was, it was for symptoms only. So, to summarize and conclude, I haven't had time to show all the data, but there is consistent evidence that PCI has no clinical benefit over optimal medical therapy, and that drug eluting stents do not improve clinical outcomes over bare metal stents. For almost 80% of patients with three-vessel disease there, that with syntax scores above 22, there is a strong survival benefit with cabbage, apparent by three to five years and continuing to diverge past that time. There is consistent evidence from 13 propensity match registries with over 400,000 patients of the survival benefit of cabbage over PCI.
For left main, almost two-thirds of syntax scores above 32, and there's a survival benefit with cabbage by five years, but at the higher risk of stroke. For syntax patients with left main below 32, there is increasing evidence that PCI may produce at least equivalent results to cabbage regarding mortality and with a lower incidence of stroke, but we'll get a definitive answer from this by Excel and Noble. If we're truly going to assess the efficacy of PCI versus cabbage, they should have a minimum of five years follow-up. There is consistent unwarranted variation in the ratios of PCI to cabbage between countries and within countries. There is strong evidence that the absence of MDTs based on guidelines means that most elective PCI patients misunderstand its rationale and it results in a large number of inappropriate PCI interventions. Guidelines are transparent, they protect the patients against receiving the wrong interventions and they protect doctors against administering the wrong intervention. Finally, I do believe professional bodies should persuade statutory bodies or payers to only reimburse interventions agreed by an MDT and based on guidelines, or at least when there's clear documentation as to why guidelines were not followed. On that point, I'm going to conclude my talk. I'd like to thank the Society again for the privilege of giving this presentation and you, the audience, for your attention. Thank you.